fitness should never be versing health. But unfortunately, we don't always have a balanced view of fitness. We may want a look that's associated with fitness so bad that we are willing to sacrifice our health to get it. Or we could be an athlete and we train solely in one area of fitness to improve our performance, neglecting other areas that could benefit our lives. For example, you could be a marathoner, but when it comes time to lift something heavy, like a fridge or washing machine, you may just wish you spent a little bit more time in the gym lifting some weights. Or you could be a power lifter, used to lifting big heavy weights, but get winded running down the street to catch a bus. Now, health-based fitness is not a new concept, and it doesn't mean we can't run a marathon or lift heavy weights in the gym. But what it does mean is that the focus of our fitness is to support and improve our health. So how do you know if you have a health-based fitness plan? Or how would you go about building a health-based fitness plan? Well, first, let's start with the World Health Organization's definition of health. They define it as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not just the absence of disease or infirmity. So we know that leading a fit lifestyle will reduce the risk of many serious diseases. But to be completely physically healthy, we have to do more than control how active we are or how we choose to be active. We need to also to take charge of our diet and nutrition which includes any alcohol or drugs we may be taking. The next two important components of physical health are being in charge of our rest and sleep, as well as any minor ailments we may have, and going to the doctor when necessary. The next thing the World Health mentions in its definition is mental well-being. And this is when a person has a positive sense of well-being, capable of enjoying life and the challenges it brings. Now, fitness aids in this not only because of the serotonin and endorphins that it releases when we train, and we get an even bigger mood boost when we train outdoors, but it also helps to give us more energy to take on our day-to-day -day activities and the challenges that life brings, as well as it helps us to relax at the end of the day and get a good night's sleep. Now, we can even see how it helps us take our mind off our problems when we work out as the focus starts to shift from our problems to how our muscles are feeling while training. Our minds start to become quiet as we focus inward on how our bodies are responding to the training stimulus. The sweat, the heartbeat, the intensity. The last thing the World Health Organization mentions is social well-being. Stress can be a social well-being killer. Exercise aids in this not only because of the positive hormone response it gives, but training helps to strengthen our muscles, relieving tension and making it easier for us to relax. Including a good stretching program or some yoga into our exercise plan will help us to recover not only physically, but mentally as well. As we train, it will improve our fitness level and our confidence, and this will translate into social situations as well as it gives us opportunity to meet like-minded people, whether it be at the gym, a yoga class, or maybe a competitive event like a track meet. I know as time goes on and more and more of my friends and acquaintances are starting to exercise, I'm getting invited along to do a workout or two. So having a balanced view of fitness will always support good health, whether it be physically, mentally, or socially. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50 signing out, keep working out, keep having fun, and we will talk to you again in that next video.